So good morning, everyone. I am Jessie Wittish with Kentucky Youth Advocates. It's great to see all of you. Some of you are here for the first time. Some of you are here for uh, what I, I believe we've maybe ventured into the 40th, possibly, Advocate Virtual Forum. forum. Uh, so we are recording today's forum as both a podcast and a uh, video recording. So we ask that you stay muted, but if you have any questions, because we are going to be talking about Children's Advocacy Week, there, we know there may be some kind of detailed questions and we may have forgotten to say anything, please do drop those into the chat and we will um, try and answer those. And if we don't have the answer, I'll look it up and try and get it in the follow-up email to all of you. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Terry Brooks. Thank you, Jesse. And uh, as always, uh, just wanna echo Jesse's appreciation for you guys being on the call. Uh, you know, as, as much as we can, uh, we try to make this about leaders and we try to make it about y'all but uh, i would be very remiss if i did not uh, take just a moment and publicly thank uh everybody uh who is my colleague at kya and uh, i think especially jesse for uh turning what would have been such an easy cop out into a an amazing opportunity so you know that uh, you've heard this story a million times if some of you are regulars that our first children's advocacy day had almost six people and that was counting myself twice uh so uh that's grown over the years right i mean we pack the rotunda pack the capital uh this year we're not packing or you know filling anything and uh there was real discussion as to do we just hang it up well you know instead of just hanging it up or going through in a sort of like, well, we'll do something. Uh, we, I think, blown it out of the water. Uh, I think we have like 17, 18 different events. Uh, what I would tell you is that, that in a, the strangest way possible, your voice has never been more important. And the opportunity to make it heard has never been more profound. What we're finding is there is no way we could have pulled off this many events in normal times, but oddly legislators have a little bit of time on their hands. Not saying they're not busy, they're going into committees and sessions. But when you hear uh, whoever on our team is gonna lay out the, the agenda, there are so many opportunities and uh, what we have found is uh, legislative leaders are responding just like this, man. They're take this call, they'll take this group, et cetera. So I just want to emphasize to you that this virtualness, which still seems little, really odd to me, okay? I, I you know, I'm going to miss the rotunda gestalt, but, but there is real power and opportunity in, uh, in what we're doing this year. Uh, we did due diligence. Uh, our kickoff is with a legislator who just yesterday we did a pre recording and he emphasized again that this year, more than ever, individual voices are counting. They're not hearing from nearly as many people. So that means that if you have a particular passion when it comes to a blueprint priority or any issue related to kids, if you have a strong belief in a particular budget investment that has to get made for kids this year, your voice carries a stronger electoral vote. I mean, you can be California this year in talking to your legislator. So the intent of today, I believe, is to kind of give you the architecture of the week, make sure that you're aware of opportunities. And again, the message from me is whether that's talking to the administration, the Senate or the House, it's not a crowded field this year of voices. I take that as a wonderful opportunity for children's champions to use their voice as a, as a megaphone this year. So with that, uh, Jesse, I'll kick it back to you or whomever you tell me to kick it to. And uh, thanks again. We're gonna, we want to see you 17 times next week. Okay, so Patricia, take it from here. Thanks. I'll take it. Thank you, Terry.
Um, thanks everybody. We're so excited to see you here. Um, we're super excited for next week and to kind of tell, share all of the 17, maybe 18 um, events we have scheduled. And so um, my, I have the wonderful job of being able to moderate and um, ask my colleagues to share this with you. So um, before we jump into the um, agenda for next week, I know it's been a couple weeks um, since we've been here with you. Um, and for some of you, uh, maybe you missed us two weeks ago. And so we thought it'd be great to start with a reminder. Um, we know everything's um, in Frankfurt. It's a little different than it has been in past years. Um, and so Mahek, could you kind of um, give us a lay of the land? Um, what's going on in Frankfurt right now? Where are we in session? Um, and um, what's gonna be the same and what's gonna be different? Certainly, yeah. Um, so currently the General Assembly is still in recess for a few more days and they'll resume part two of the short 30 day session on Tuesday, February 2nd. And while most of the General Assembly is still in recess, the House and Senate Budget Conference Committee members are working through the details of the one year budget that they have to pass this year. So if you haven't done so, as Terry alluded to, we encourage child advocates across the state to reach out to their state senator, representative, and the governor to prioritize kids and families as this budget process moves forward in Frankfurt. And um, if you haven't, if you need a really strong checklist about the strong um, state budget priorities for kids and families, we really encourage you to view our Blueprint for Kentucky's Children's Budget Priority List. And I'm hoping that it will magically appear in the chat as I'm talking. Um, and then also, in addition to the budget being passed this year, we're hoping to see several Blueprint policy priorities to move past as part two convenes. Um, and so, again, we encourage you to really follow along in this process by looking at our bill tracker, which will be continually updated and you'll have a chance to review all the bills that are good for kids as well as our, as well as our blueprint for Kentucky's children's bill bills that we're working. Um, and then just as a quick reminder, because I know there's a few new faces that are joining us here today um, about the process of how a bill becomes a law for um, the new advocates joining us. Usually a bill is introduced in the state um, house or Senate. And usually the process is um, a committee on committees sends a bill to a certain specific committee. But this year, as I mentioned in our last advocate virtual forum, bills aren't automatically assigned to committee. So this is another reason why your advocacy is important more now than ever during this short session is we urge our partners and advocates to reach out to the House and Senate floor leaders as well as committee chairs to be notified. So if they would like to see their policies move forward, because like I said, they're not gonna be automatically assigned. Um, so your voice is really critical in that process. Um, and then once a bill is assigned to committee, it's up to the committee chair to hear the bill. And after the bill is heard and passes the committee, hopefully it moves, over, moves on to um, being voted on the chamber floor. So once it moves past the chamber floor, it goes through that whole process again in the other chamber. Um, and so I just wanted to reiterate that um, just so folks have a refresher of how that process moves forward. And before I turn it back over to Patricia, I want to mention that over 1 million Kentucky kids are counting on their leaders right now to prioritize them and um, to let you know that leaders are needing your voice to know what they need to succeed. Great. Thank you, Mahek. And um, I think we're going to talk about it a little more later, but we do have a bill tracker on our website, um, which will help you keep track of which ones are uh, our priorities. The blueprint priorities are waiting for that committee assignment to help uh, help you with your advocacy. Um, so more on that to come. Uh, so next, I want to turn it over to Jesse Wittish. Um, Jesse, can you give us um, an idea of all of these events that are happening next week? Um, give us give us the rundown. All right. So um, this is so exciting to be talking about all of these events. When we met two weeks ago, we only had a few of these locked in, and now. Um, we're able to tell you so much more. Some of you have seen uh, some of these updates via email, um, but as Terry said, it is really exciting to kind of go from one, one big day into this sort of 
diffuse but powerful um, array of events. And we do have, um, we have 15, I think now 16 events that are open to general, like all advocates. And then we have a couple of events that are um, specific for some specific groups of youth that we work with. But yeah, it's looking to be about um, eight, 17 to 18 events total. So there is, um, as I talk, if you want to look through the schedule, and we'll we'll talk a little bit more about this later, but if you just, you know, like to look at something, um, while I talk, I'm going to drop in a link to um, the app that we'll talk about in a minute, but you can see the schedule um, on your in your browser window if you want while I talk. So there are still gonna be some pieces of the like Children's Advocacy Day that is translating to Children's Advocacy Week. As Mahek mentioned, one of those we hope is visits with your legislator. So they are taking um, virtual visits. And if you really want to, you can go up to the Capitol if you make an appointment, but also they're taking virtual visits. So that is one piece that we hope if you did that before that you will do that again, still contacting your legislator. Um, some of the other uh, featured events that will include pieces you'll recognize. Um, we have a kickoff event, and that is going to be with Senator Gibbons. Um, it's not the rally, that's a whole different thing, but uh, a kickoff that like kind of welcome to Children's Advocacy Week, and Senator Gibbs Gibbons gives us an overview, sort of like a, a lay of the land uh, in terms of Frankfurt. We're also gonna have a conversation with legislators of color, and both of those are on Monday. On Tuesday, we're going to have the rally. It's going to be very different this year. It is uh, obviously going to be virtual. That's going to be at 10 a.m., as it often is in person. We encourage you to invite everyone you know to the rally, even if we can't all see one another and be there cheering. We um, are going to hear from the governor, from Senate leadership, House leadership. Uh, we have some young people. We have some awards that we're going to, like, virtually do some shout outs for. So please do mark that on your calendar. We're also going to have uh, on Wednesday a panel with journalists from Kentucky, Scott Jennings, Lawrence Smith, Linda Blackford. We will have a conversation with the Lieutenant Governor on Thursday. And then on Friday, we're talking with Secretary of State Michael Adams about elections and um, kind of how do we move forward uh, even after an election. So in addition to all of those featured events, we're having some conversations with legislators. Um, so those will be about specific issue areas. So education, health, justice, which includes criminal justice and juvenile justice, and child welfare. And those are going to be Q&As. We're holding an hour each day for those. We may get legislators for a full hour or because, I mean, legislators are, are literally like dropping in between meetings. It may be that we get one legislator for 15 minutes, another legislator for 15 minutes. So hold that time on your calendar. And uh, if we have a little space between legislators, we're going to show you cute videos of kids art. Uh, or kids uh, play music or something. Uh, but we're really excited about those to get to talk to legislators a little bit more about these specific topics. Each day, we are also going to have a policy and advocacy information session in the afternoon. And that's going to have content that is similar to what we've had on some advocate virtual forums. So an overview of the blueprint and a blueprint for Kentucky's children policy priorities, what's going on in Frankfurt. Um, we are inviting legislators to those so folks can hear from legislators. Each of those is going to be kind of the same, except that they are going to have different co-hosts because partners from across the state are co-hosting these events with us. And I see some of our partner co-hosts on the forum today. So those partners include Lotus, the Center, Casa of the Ohio Valley, Metro United Way, Neighborhood House, Casa of the River Region, 
um, some of our Face It Bluegrass partners, Volunteers of America, Learning Grove, Family Enrichment Center. So shout out to all of you who are co-hosting those. And, um, but if you, it, basically, if you want to come to one of those, you, you don't, I mean, you can come to all five. If you want to come to all five, that's great. But if you just want to come to one, you're probably going to hear similar information, just to not have um, uh, the same legislators each time. So that is the week. Uh, Commissioner Marta Miranda Straub, I'll just do a plug for this. She is going to do a conversation with some of our uh, COSER Charities Face It Movement Youth Ambassadors. So that's not an event that's open to the public, but just wanted to give her a shout out as well. because She will still be joining us for the week. And I think that is it in terms of what is on the schedule. Uh, but if you have questions, uh, again, please, please drop those into the chat. Thanks, Jesse. And I think, uh, have no fear you all, that app that Jesse mentioned, which we're really excited about. I think later on today, before we leave, we're gonna give you a, a quick tutorial on how to, how to use that um, because it's super cool and that's gonna help you navigate the schedule, which is continuing to evolve. Um, if there's one word to describe um, the work of our team here, I think it's nimble. <laughs> Um, and very flexible. So, um, Jesse, before I let you go, um, and shout out, I want to echo your shout out to all the partner co-hosts. We're super excited. We couldn't do it without any of you. Um, can you, I know we've also got some major sponsors that make this work possible. So, um, who should we, we be recognizing today? So a lot of folks on this forum are sponsors of Children's Advocacy Week, and you'll be hearing um, and seeing them more. Um, you know, we're, we're trying to plug you sponsors as much as possible during Children's Advocacy Week, so you'll be um, yeah, hearing about this again. But I'm, I'm actually going to share my screen really quickly to do a shout out for all of the um, sponsors that, I think this is the right window here. Okay, can you all see that? All right, so we have Aetna as our signature sponsor. They also sponsor our advocate virtual forums. And we have social media sponsors, including AT&T and WellCare. And social media sponsors are, are pretty important this year because there's a lot more social media. And then our partner sponsors. So Kentucky CASA Network, Child Care Council of Kentucky, Children's Alliance. I see um, you all here. I also see folks from the Kentucky CASA Network on today's forum. Face It, the Foundation for Healthy Kentucky, KOHC, see, see some of you members on today's forum, our friends at COSER Charities, Learning Grove, who's um, also a great partner, Metro United Way, National Council of Jewish Women, Ohio Valley Educational Cooperative, Kentucky's Voice for Early Childhood, Volunteers of America, Bellwood and Brookline, and Seven Counties, and the Pritchard Committee. Thank you, all of you, whether you're watching this live or hearing later, we really appreciate um, not only your sponsorship of this event, but all of you are also just incredible partners um, as we um, do all of this advocacy work. So um, thank you. And I'm going to go ahead and leave my screen up because I think as we transition, um, I'm going to show you some tools uh, also on here. Thank so. you, Jesse. And thanks. And uh a heartfelt thank you to all of our sponsors. And Jesse, is it too late if somebody wanted to sponsor? It is not too late. So uh, we haven't made all those slides with like the sponsor logos and yeah. stuff yet. We keep, we always okay. like wait until the last minute. So if you want, um, if you would like to sponsor, just there's um, information on our uh, website. You can see uh, down here, I think all the way at the bottom, or you can just email me. And we um, we can talk more. Okay. Thanks for that plug, Patricia. Uh -huh. Thank you. Okay, Mara Powell, I would like to turn it to you. Um, can you kind of give folks on the uh, on this call today what's their to do list next week? What are the critical things that um, ways that we really need them to act? Absolutely. And I would say, I think we always emphasize this too, it's beyond just Children's Advocacy Day, beyond just Children's Advocacy Week, but throughout the session, you know, stepping up for kids. So um, first, and I think Jesse's going to help me kind of walk through this too um, on the screen to show you on our website where all these tools are. 
But um, first, if you haven't already, be sure to check out the Blueprint for Kentucky's Children Priority Agenda, that budget checklist, um, the fact sheet packet to just become familiar with all of those, um, those issue areas and um, the important data and, and research that backs up those issue, issue areas as you um, meet with your legislators and talk with them. So, yes, thank you, Jesse, for showing that. Um, and, and then for, for our advocates, we have um, a great toolkit um, on our advocacy toolkit page. Um, and yeah, you'll see there how we list out just a really easy checklist to go through. Um, you know, if you don't know who your legislators are, um, some folks have new um, state representatives or state senators. So we have a really easy tool where you can just type in your address and I'll come up with um, who those folks are, how to contact them, um, how to connect with them on social media. Yeah, super easy. It pops up automatically with our picture too. So you kind of know uh, who you're looking for, who you're talking to. We also have uh, links to stream KET, um, which we always tout them. They're so great. They're streaming, especially this year. It's more important than ever since we can't be there uh, for committee meetings, for example. So it's great to um, access that, that website and be able to stream committee meetings. And then also as um, our legislators are conversing on the chamber floor. So um, check out that site if you haven't already um, and of course the LRC site which offers so many resources um, uh, you know our legislator information our um, committee meeting information of course uh, bill information and you can also do a bill watch there um, so if you haven't explored the LRC website lots of useful information be sure to check that out um, and then we encourage you if you aren't already uh, sign up for our regular KYA email updates. We send out a weekly wrap up each Friday uh, with, you know, what's been happening on our blog, what's some upcoming events, some reminders, event reminders, that sort of thing. And then also if you sign up for that, we will um, share any blueprint bill movement that happens during the session. So we send out regular statements when those blueprint items advance. So um, if you want to stay in tune with that, be sure to stay up to date there. And then we also link to the bill tracker, um, which we've re referenced a couple of times. And that, yeah, thanks, Jesse. So that's where you'll see the bills that have already been filed and we're starting to track. So including those blueprint items, which we'll be talking about shortly, as well as those other um, bills that are good for kids um, that aren't necessarily on the blueprint, but we're still tracking them because we can see um, a good impact that they will have on children and families. And so, um, you know, we offer a little bit of information about them, link to the LRC page um, so you can kind of see the bill language. We track the sponsors, where it is in committee, and you can see that fun tool where it shows the bill movement. Um, it's really fun at the end of session when we can see progress for each of them um, and as they've been signed by the governor. So um, be sure to bookmark that page. It'll be helpful you know, next week as our legislators reconvene, but also throughout the session as the bills move. Um, and then of course, be sure to continue to check the Children's Advocacy Week page. Um, that's where, you know, if you haven't already, um, you can sign up for those updates that we send out. You can view the schedule, which we'll be adding on there, um, I think today. And um, our list of many sponsors that Jesse have mentioned and download the new app um, that we're really excited to preview with you all. So lots to do, Patricia. <laughs> Thank you, indeed. Um, so speaking of the app, uh, Jesse, would you mind kind of just giving us a quick rundown um, of how it works? Sure, absolutely. And um, I'll just point out that the app is really used for tracking schedule, tracking resources, um, kind of tracking speakers, but all of the events will still be conducted via Zoom or uh, some of the events you can also watch on Facebook Live. So the app, we, we wanted to go, um, you know, a little more tech, but not too high tech. So you don't have to learn a whole new platform or anything like that. So um, you can get to the app on um, the Children's Advocacy Week page, you click on app and it'll take you here. So you can, from this page, it gives you instructions to download this onto your phone. You can scan the QR code or you can text yourself a link 
Or if you just want to use the app on this page right here, you can also do that. So um, when you click on this, um, it kind of takes you to a main page. And then down here is where you can see our great sponsors. You can find fact sheets for all of the Blueprint for Kentucky's children policy priorities. Um, you can see the schedule for each day. And um, if you're doing this on your phone, there's actually a little button up here and you can build your own schedule. So you can go through and say like, oh, I want to do this and this and this and this. And um, when you open up the app, you can say view my schedule and it'll just, you know, show you so you can keep track of it. But like uh, on Tuesday, you can see here's the rally, here's the education policy session, here's the policy and advocacy information session. It gives our speakers, um, our co-hosts, um, here at the rally, you can see, again, all of our speakers. So it's just a way to keep track of that. All of the Zoom links for each event are going to be in the app. We didn't want to put all of those Zoom links on the website because it can just be kind of bad form for Zoom safety to put all of those on one single um, web page. So we're putting them in here, which again, you'll be able to access from this page or on your phone if you um, prefer to Zoom on your phone. We're also going to have, um, uh, there's a spot for FAQs that has some more information. There's also going to be um, uh, a social feed where you can upload some posts. Uh, we're still setting that part up, but we're really excited about that. So we can see like all the photos of you at home doing your advocacy, um, even while um, you're not actually at the Capitol. And you'll also be able to send some thank you messages to legislators as well. So again, I encourage you to get this on your phone, but if that's not your jam, go ahead and get it from the website. And there's only a couple features that you can't do if you're just accessing it from here. So we're really excited about this. Um, and as Patricia mentioned, as we kind of finalize details, finalize legislators and all of that, we will be adding those to the app to keep that updated. And uh, I think that's all that I have to share about the app, but if folks have questions about it, drop those in. For sure, drop them in the chat and we will we'll continue to answer. Um, I'm As I'm sitting here, I'm just thinking of, you know, we've know that uh, one of the silver linings, if there are any of the pandemic, is the, in some ways that we saw our state modernized through telehealth. Um, and it kind of pushed and I'm kind of thinking, well, I know we've always talked about having an app for Children's Advocacy Day. And here we did it. So awesome. Maybe this is, uh, we're all embracing technology uh, extra much these days, aren't we? So um, we hope you all find it useful. Um, and we're looking forward uh, to uh, uh, seeing everybody uh, next week at Children's Advocacy, Day, Advocacy Week. Um, so lastly, before we move on, now you've gotten kind of the, the technical side of how to be involved and what's going on. Um, and so we thought um, before we end, we wanted to give you a reminder of the policy side of um, what are the important blueprint bills that are um, that you should be focusing on and that we'd love you to be reaching out to your legislators about. So um, to that end, I'd like to start with Ben Geese and ask you, Ben, could you give folks on the call an idea of what are the blueprint bills that have already been filed? Um, who's sponsoring them and where are they in the process? Um, and in addition to those bills, we know too, of course, there's a state budget. Um, and so if you could update, give us a quick update on um, where, where are we in the budget process and what are we hopeful about? Absolutely. Very happy to do that. And thank you so much for that introduction. And I know that my uh, friend and colleague, Jessie, will be going through on her screen as we go through our blueprint for Kentucky's children bills that have already been filed. You'll notice that first up on the list um, is a bill to allow paid family leave for state employees. It's House Bill number 42. And our sponsor for that is our longtime friend and ally, Representative Josie Raymond of Jefferson County. 
Um, as you can see, thanks to Mara's wonderful tool down below, that bill is currently awaiting committee assignment. Um, so any time that you can hop online, send an email to your legislator, particularly those in the House at the moment, um, or pick up the phone and call or nudge them if you can meet with them in person in any way, um, that is certainly helpful. Uh, this is a very important item because we know that if you've ever been a parent and you think back to those days of being a new parent or you're planning on having children or maybe like some folks on our staff, you've got new little ones running around the home right now. Um, spending good quality time with those newborns when they are newly born is critically important not only to their health and safety, but also to the bond that will emerge between the child and the parent. Um, this moment, this issue, I have to say, is gaining tremendous steam and momentum, not only in Kentucky, but throughout the entire United States of America. Um, if you're a federal worker right now, for example, uh, you get paid family leave. So you work for a congressman or a senator in D.C., you get this. Um, and that's with wide bipartisan support up there. So our goal is to bring that to Kentucky for the workers in our state government. And who knows, maybe in a few years, this will spread out across the private sector as well and continue to help more people. So please, please, please pick up the phone, get out your iPhone and fire off a few emails at House Bill 42 under Representative Raymond. And we can move on to our next blueprint bill that has been filed. Um, and this is um, House Bill 54 uh, from Representative Jason Nemus is to allow paid family leave to state employees. So a similar vein to our last bill, um, a little bit more detail, uh, that this bill would allow folks 12 weeks of paid family leave after birth or adoption, which is critically important, of a child. I know uh, my family, they adopted a five-year-old some 10 years ago, so this would have been something wonderful to have. So make sure to reach out to Rep Nemus and his colleagues as well. Um, another critically important policy uh, that we have waiting in the winds now, it's been filed, but as you can see is a waiting committee assignment, um, is our blueprint policy to expand local control to curb tobacco use among youth and improve health, uh, and pu excuse me, improve health. And so uh, a little bit of the details about this bill, you'll see that uh, it's listed as House Bill 147, from Representatives Kim Mosier and Representative Tina Bojanowski. So it's got broad bipartisan support, both a Republican and a Democrat sponsor. And why this bill is important is we are saying that it is okay for local cities and towns across the Commonwealth to decide how they want to handle tobacco policy locally at like the city council, or if you're in Louisville, like Metro council level. And what this will do is give them the power in order to ensure that the youth of their area are insulated or protected against marketing or other tools from big tobacco to ensure that we limit big tobacco's reach into the minds and influence of youth. Um, this is repealing an old law from back in the 90s uh, when big tobacco is really you know, flexing their muscle in the state that took that power away from local communities and gave it to the state government because uh, they were a little bit easier to uh, influence at that point in time uh, through tobacco legislation. So let's take that power, let's give it back to uh, the local folks and let's have those folks protect our youth. Um, on down a little bit further, uh, we have another very important priority, Senate Bill 36, which is sponsored by Senator Whitney, Whitney Westerfield. And this one is actually in committee uh, so this one is a little bit further along the process. Again, if you think about how a bill becomes a law, first we have to get the bill filed and then it goes to a committee. That committee then votes. And if that vote in committee is successful, in this case, it would go to the full Senate for a vote. And then that process starts over again over in the House of Representatives. Um, and as Mara mentioned earlier, getting a bill assigned to a committee is not a given. Even if it is assigned to committee, um, getting it voted on and heard is still not a given. So you've got to keep pushing, pushing, pushing all the way through. A little bit more detail about this particular Senate bill. Um, this allows juvenile court judges to use their discretion 
uh, in the decision to transfer youth ages 14 and older to adult court. And so we know that the justice system, if there is to be justice, cannot be one size fits all. We know that every situation that would land a youth uh, before a judge is different and complex. And those youth deserve to have their side of the story heard and have the judges that we elect make an informed decision based upon the facts of the case. And so this is a good blow for justice. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, which I hope you are, uh, feel free to reach out to the Senate Judiciary Committee uh, and tell them that you expect them to vote yes. And send a big thank you to Senator Westerfield for sponsoring it. Um, next, we've got, again, similar to the last time, a companion bill over in the Senate, Senate Bill 81, uh, from Louisville Republican Senator Julie Rocky Adams. And again, Senate Bill 81 would allow city and county governments the option to regulate the use, display, sell, and distribution of tobacco products, including e-cigarettes. So somewhat similar to the bill that we described earlier. And I believe, if I'm correct, Jesse, that those are all of the blueprint bills that have been filed. Now we've got many more that we're still working on getting filed. So I urge you to also go to KY's website, or maybe it will pop up in the chat as I'm speaking. Uh, take a look at our full blueprint for Kentucky's children, because uh, there's still plenty of work yet to do. But we're glad to see that we've got a good running start on these critically important bills that have already been filed. Um, also, when it comes to the state budget, um, there are a few items here that I would like to highlight, and I say a few because it's certainly not all that I would like to highlight, uh, but in keeping with time, these are the ones that we deem to be pretty important. Um, overall, with the state budget this year, with it being a one-year budget, which we know is extremely atypical and is a uh, situation that we find ourselves in thanks to the coronavirus, like so many other things in our lives these days. Um, this, I, I would describe it as more of a continuation budget. There are some other bright spots where we're seeing other priorities lifted up and really given more attention to and even some more funding to. But by and large, for a lot of the issues that we're looking at, it's looking like largely a continuation from that budget that passed in the previous year. Um, one that we are really hoping that folks will get on the line about um, is to increase funding for the Child Care Assistance Program, or CCAP. Uh, we know that across Kentucky, working parents, they depend on child care in order to A, re-enter the workforce, B, remain in the workforce, or C, move up in their job or their career. Uh, we know that there are a good many uh, Kentucky parents across our state who either could not accept a job or could not take a job promotion due to a lack of access to affordable, high-quality child care. And when you think about the hurt that that causes not only that individual family and, of course, the child, but the economic well-being of our state as a whole, that's a major issue, especially when 50% of all Kentuckians live in a child care desert. So what we're asking is for eligibility into the child care assistance program for that percentage to increase. Our goal is to get it up to 200% of the federal poverty level. And then of course, to increase reimbursements going to child care center small business owners to ensure that they're able to take, take CCAP families and also ensure that they're able to keep their doors open. So we know that with the pandemic, that business sector has been struggling and struggling terribly so. Um, moving along, uh, another budget item that we're excited to see, but we want to keep pushing on, is an investment in infrastructure to close the digital divide. Uh, we know that's broadband internet access. It's incredibly important now, whether your students are on NTI or maybe they've returned to in-person or will be returning to in-person learning soon. We know that internet access when it comes to education is important now, was important before the pandemic, will be important after it. Uh, when you think about equitable education outcomes, especially when it comes to homework and general access to information. It's also important in health policy when we think about the expanded role that telehealth is having throughout the Commonwealth these days. And I can assure you that's only going to continue as we move into the future. Another critical piece that I know is a passion project of my friend and colleague Courtney, who you heard from earlier, 
and I'm going to say it's a passion project of mine as well, and it should be yours too, is to expand investment in child abuse forensic services so all children who experience maltreatment can receive the best care. Uh, we continually hear from advocates uh, in that uh, sector, in that medical sector, that they're overburdened, that they don't have what they need, and that makes no sense to me because as we heard many, many times over, Kentucky shamefully is number one in the nation for child abuse. We hear a lot of people talking about that being a bad thing. The problem is we're not seeing a whole lot of action around this particular item. So we need to get this done. Pick up the phone and call some people, tell them it needs to get done. Uh, one of the last items I'll highlight, of course we've got plenty more, so please forgive me if I did not hit all of them. The last item that I will highlight is to prioritize kinship care. Uh, of course, we know that's care for uh, youth and a family member that's related to them. And what we want to do is we want to uh, sustain investment in their critical services and financial supports. Um, I think I shared the last time that when I was young, uh, my mom and dad took in uh, some little cousins of mine who unfortunately uh, entered into the foster care system for a while. And so for us and for our family, we were able to do that. Um, we really didn't take any money to do it, and we really didn't have a whole lot of critical support. So we know those are huge barriers to family members or even close friends of the family who may be willing to step up in that situation um, and do the right thing for kids. So with that, um, I'll go ahead and turn things over uh, to Courtney, Me? who I think Actually, has some- I'll, I'll take yeah. it, Ben. I'll take oh, it, thank you. Sorry, to Patricia, <laughs> go for it. Thanks for that overview. Yeah. Um, and I think now um, we want to turn it to Courtney and uh, ask you, so now you all know about the blueprint bills that have been filed, but fear not, we're still working. There's more that we are working um, to get filed. Um, so Courtney, can you share with us which are the ones that we're still looking um, or hoping um, to see next week? Yeah, sure. So um, we do have a few bills that haven't uh, been filed yet. They do have sponsors and then we have some uh, that haven't necessarily secured a sponsor yet. And both of those are completely normal. We see this happen every year. Uh, but those bills include a juvenile justice bill that would establish a minimum age th threshold uh, for when kids can have their complaints heard in juvenile court. Uh, we want to amend the local planning and zoning laws to allow regulated home-based family, family child care options. Um, COVID has really helped to amplify just how important child care is to parents and caregivers. Shocking, I know. Uh, we want to eliminate the uh, chain of command reporting procedures that we see in public and private agencies. Um, and all this would mean is that internal organizational policies do not absolve you of your responsibility as a mandated reporter um, of child abuse and neglect. Uh, we also want to extend the statute of limitations for misdemeanor sexual abuse cases involving minors. Um, and this would really just allow for delayed disclosures that we know are the norm in child sexual abuse cases. And then also um, we want to remove the clergy penitent privilege exemption in the child abuse reporting laws. So these are all uh, blueprint items that um, are still uh, kind of in, in the works at the moment. Um, and so even though we have um, a few bills that um, haven't been filed yet, your advocacy and your outreach to legislators isn't any less important. Um, this year, there's limited in-person contact at the Capitol. So really taking advantage of the opportunity to call or to email your legislator. You can do both repeatedly if you want to. Um, legislators always want to hear from their constituents, right? They say it constantly. And as Terry said um, at the start of at this forum, your voice really does matter. Um, and it's also really important to remember that these legislators are part-time legislators. So when they're not in Frankfurt, they're in their home counties, they're working jobs that aren't necessarily related to policy. So they really do rely on their constituents to be their eyes and their ears um, and to educate them on the issue. So many of the policies um, and budget priorities that are good for kids, a lot of the ones that Ben just went over for us, um, that like the mandatory transfer bill and then also extending the statute of limitations, those were filed because of personal or professional experiences that their constituents shared with them. So if you have a story um, and you're comfortable sharing it, please do so because it really does make a huge difference in the lives of the kids across the state. 
Um, so if you don't know, also if you don't know who your legislator is, you can use our legislator lookup tool um, and we can share that with you in the chat or even uh, send it in a follow up email and then also Mahek has already uh, shared a link with some tips for emailing and calling your legislator in the chat a little while ago as well. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So um, thanks to all of you. Thanks to team members for laying this out for everybody. Thanks to everyone for hanging with us and um, for, you know, we, we are very much aware that none of this can happen without you. Um, and we all need to be working together. Um, and great things can happen when we all work together. So um, kids are counting on all of us. Um, and we sure are counting on you um, to show up next week and throughout the year. Um, so thanks to everyone. Um, we also want to thank Atna Better Health of Kentucky for their support of today's Advocate Virtual Forum. Um, and we will be, as always, we're going to send a follow-up email that's going to include a recording of today's forum along with the resources we discussed. And um, we look forward to seeing you next week. Thanks, everybody. Bye, everyone. Thank you.